Juneau, Alaska, July 25th, 2017. Quote, she wouldn't stop laughing at me, unquote. This was said by Kenneth Manzanares about his wife, Christy. The couple, their three daughters with extended family members, would take a cruise on the Emerald Princess. The high school sweethearts were celebrating their 18th wedding anniversary. Sometime later on the cruise at dinner, the couple began to bicker. Then Kenneth began bickering with his wife's brother. Christy and Kenneth excused themselves from the dining area with Christy saying, quote, I am done, end quote. Several times she would say this. As the family went up to their cabin with the children following, the couple continued their arguing inside the cabin. Kenneth told their children to leave the room and he locked the doors. They did what their father told him to do and they watched through the window of the adjoining cabin. One of the children attempted to open the door. Their father very sternly advised them not to and he locked the door. The daughters continued to watch their parents through the glass window, still verbally arguing with one another. Christy would tell her husband she wanted a divorce and she started to laugh. This act infuriated Kenneth. He punched her with closed fists to the face and head. By this time, they were on the bed and he was straddling her, but still punching her blow by blow. Children were horrified. They began banging on the window to get their father to stop. Each blow to the face and head, he wouldn't stop. One of the daughters would run out the room and try to get help. I believe people in the room across from them may have notified the crew on the ship. One of the daughters was able to find her uncle, Dallas Hunt, Christie's brother. As help arrived to the cabin, Kenneth was dragging Christie's battered and bruised body to the balcony, believed as an attempt to throw her in the sea. Her brother had grabbed a hold of her leg to stop this from occurring. They said that there was blood everywhere, all over the beds, the walls, the furniture. There was even blood on the balcony. It's believed by now the father and the second brother was at the cabin. The brother had asked Kenneth what happened. He would tell him what he would say in court. Quote, she wouldn't stop laughing at me. End quote. Christie's face was so seriously beaten. Medical assistants arrived and had attempted to perform CPR on her. She died at the scene. Her face and head was so damaged you would have thought she was beaten with a hammer, but it was with her husband's bare fists. Her children had re-entered the room through a second way into the cabin. Her brothers, her father, had all witnessed the brutal aftermath. Kenneth Manzanares was arrested. Christy was so unrecognizable, the mother of three, the realtor, the person who they said was there for everybody, had to have a closed casket. In court, in his defense, they were asking for seven years. They would speak about how his low IQ of 80 and how he had severe brain damage during the times he played contact sports in college, which included football, wrestling, and boxing. They said the drugs he had been taking combined had to be able to have a lot to do with his behavior. He was on opioids for pain, a drug used for erectile dysfunction, Adderall, testosterone, and amphetamine, a weight loss drug. They said all these drugs combined, which he injected, and then he was drinking alcohol, and the marriage may have been on the verge of collapse. 
could have been the reason why this unfortunate thing happened. Under the Nero psychological testing and Nero psychiatric mental status examinations, they revealed it was Nero cognitive disorder. In other words, his moods was changed and he would have violent episodes. He may have had a manic switch, his lawyer said. They said Kenneth barely remembered the beating and was extremely remorseful. He had lost the love of his life. Kenneth's sister, Teresa Velasquez, had wrote the court on how she admired her brother and her sister-in-law's relationship. She said, quote, they were always so affectionate towards each other, unquote. She added she missed her sister-in-law every day, and she added her brother should be punished for what he had done, and she wanted the judge to make a fair decision. One of the daughters responded to the court as well. She said her father was not only taking care of them, but he made everything fun. She said if her mother would see something in a store and not purchase it for whatever reasons, her father would go back and get it. He always wanted to see his girls happy. Not everyone had loving things to say. One of Christie's brothers, Cody, caught the actions that he did horrific and walked out of the courtroom before his brother-in-law was even sentenced. Christie's father, Jeff Hunt, said, quote, I hope he gets what he deserves, end quote. The FBI in Anchorage had to investigate this murder, which had taken place on U.S. territorial waters. Special Agent Robert Brett said, quote, no one can justify the savagery committed by this man, end quote. The prosecutors painted the picture as Kenneth Manzanares being a bully with anger issues who was triggered by his wife saying she wanted a divorce. Though people who knew them well said there was no domestic abuse that they knew of, it was said in court that he had restrained her and punched holes in the walls. Kenneth's public defender would say the Manzanareses had a long, happy marriage and him being a violent abuser was a false narrative. He had even ma maintained a relationship with his children while incarcerated, and they understood his medical impairments placed a strong role onto what happened. And when she spoke about her father in court, she ended it by saying that she loved him. He would plead guilty to second-degree murder, and Kenneth Manzanares would receive 30 years in prison. What happened on that murder mystery cruise? The morning on July 25th, the couple went on a fishing excursion in Ketchikan, Alaska. While the ship was there for a port of call, the Manzanares were enjoying their 18th anniversary and witnesses say they were lovey-dovey. Kenneth started drinking. He started forcibly giving unwanted kisses to his wife. He began behaving very badly. Then at dinner it continued and the bickering started. They were arguing about how Kenneth was behaving and Christy did not like it. She told him when the boat stopped in Juno she wanted him to get off the boat. He was ruining the trip. Christy said she was done. The cruise was a murder mystery Sherlock Holmes themed event. Other passengers actually thought this was part of the entertainment of the cruise. I'm sure they were horrified when it was revealed it wasn't. Cruises are beautiful and enjoyable. I went on one decade with my family. I'll always remember it, and I'm sure this family will always remember this one too, but in a horrible way. Especially the, the daughters and the parents probably had the worst time ever. My words can't explain. On July 14, 2021, around 7 a.m. at the Lemon Creek Correctional Facility, Kenneth was found in a cell unresponsible. Medical staff took major strength to try to save him, but he would die. They added no foul play was involved and he did not have COVID. 
When Kenneth and Christy planned for celebrating their 18th wedding anniversary in Alaska, neither one of them knew they would never return home.